That was the layout of the MCDU. How we operate it is taught through a normal setup. So let's use the Airbus setup and see how we set up the aircraft for departure. The departure setup is done by the pilot flying during the cockpit preparation. The pilot flying is ready to set up the MCDU when all the necessary information is available. This includes the operational flight plan from dispatch that tells us the routing as well as performance. We will need to have the performance calculated both for takeoff and landing. We will, if obtained, require the departure clearance. This allows us to select the correct runway and instructions for departure. We will need to have picked up the latest weather using the ATIS at the airport or local weather reports. We will need to have the weight and balance available and have completed the load sheet, as well as know the fuel uptake, the block fuel on the aircraft. Once we have all the information available, or at least preliminary values, if we're talking about fuel and loading still going on, then we're ready to set up the MCDU and the flight management guidance system. For departure. We use this acronym in the Airbus aircraft, DIFS RIP, D-I-F-S-R-I-P-P. Each one represents a page and this is the sequence in which we set up everything because the information you put into one page does tie together to the next one. So for example, we couldn't set up the secondary flight plan without setting up the primary flight plan. And we can set up the performance and init B here, which is fuel prediction, before we have the initial part of the information setting. So let's look here at the information that goes into the individual pages. And then we will go through the actual setup, illustrating how all the data is inserted. From the MCDU menu page, where the aircraft powers up the MCDU to start off with, you will start by clicking the data page. The data page allows you to check the database which the MCDU is using as well as the engine options for this aircraft. And why is this important? Well, the database changes every 28 days. And we've talked about the MCDU and its setup and its database in the auto flight chapter. Now the database, if needs changing, deletes all information you have already put in. So if you need to change because the database is out of date, this has to be done prior to any other entries. Hence, we start on the data page. Once we have checked that the right database is in fact valid and selected, we will go to the init page, initiation page A. Now you select the init page and it will automatically go to what we call init A. Here we will insert preliminary information for the MCDU to know where we're going. We will select the departure and arrival airport by filling out the to and from or choosing a company route identifier to put information in that has already been pre-programmed. We will set in an alternate if we have an alternate for this particular flight. Together with the flight number, we will initialize the IRS alignment and set in cost index, cruise flight level, and trouble pause height for the aircraft to calculate performance accurately in the pages ahead. Once the aircraft knows this general information, we can go ahead and start the biggest part of the setup, which is the flight plan. The flight plan page allows the crew to insert, now that it knows the departure airport, which runway is used for departure, any SID with waypoints the actual flight plan, which consists of airways and waypoints, the arrival and the approach into our destination, and then the entire alternate flight plan, again with a departure out, an in route segment, and an arrival into our alternate. This will be where you spend the longest time doing the setup. The flight plan can either be a short or very long flight plan. All information is found in the operational flight plan from dispatch and should be set up accordingly. Once the biggest part of this is set up, 
we will then go ahead and set up our secondary flight plan. The MCDU software is capable of maintaining two flight plans. One is active, the other one is on standby, if you will, and crews use this for different purposes. When we take off, we want to use the secondary flight plan for things like an immediate return in case of an emergency, a complicated engine out SID, the likelihood that the takeoff runway is going to be changed on us, so we might want to set in a parallel runway, or we will simply just do a copy of the active flight plan, allowing us to have a backup in case we start to put in information that is going to change along the way or screw up our flight plan. From the secondary flight plan, we will then set up the radio nav page. The rad nav page allows us to manually select any nav aids we need for departure. And this is important if they are part of the SID. The auto tuning on this aircraft uses nav aids at its own discretion, but manually tuning overrides that. So it's important we do so if nav aids are required for departure. And then we have the init B. Now the loading should have been completed. We should have the fuel on board and the passenger final manifest. This allows us to put in zero fuel weight, zero fuel CG, and block fuel as put on the aircraft. Once this is in, the aircraft is capable of calculating all performance for the flight plan and secondary flight plan. The performance pages allows us for departure to set up the takeoff page with V1, VR, and V2 as calculated by the pilots based on the actual conditions outside, the selected flap setting and trimmable horizontal stabilizer setting, the trim setting, any takeoff shift from the runway we're taking off from, as well as derated or flexible values for a less than full power takeoff. The final page is the progress page and the progress page allows us to put in the bearing and distance to a specific point. Here we will set it up for the departure runway. So it gives us the ability to right after departure have an idea of where is the runway threshold in case we have to do an immediate return and how far are we from it. This goes a long way for situational awareness in an emergency situation right after takeoff. On the progress page, we also check the availability and accuracy of the navigation system. If we have GPS primary, we should have accuracy high. DIFSRIPP. DIFSRIP is used to set up the aircraft for departure. Let's do a little bit of a recap right here. DIFS RIP, D-I-F-S-R-I-P. First, we start with a data page to check the aircraft status, the engine option, and the validity of our database. Then we went on to fill out the init A page with the from and the to, cost index, cushing flight level, and flight number. From there, we went to the flight plan. The flight plan required us to put in the departing runway, the SID, as well as the entire in route segment with waypoints and airways, and the arrival into our destination with the approach and runway we expect to use. And finally, string it all together to have one complete flight plan. If you have an alternate put into the init A page, you will also use the flight plan page here to set up the entire flight plan for the alternate. After that, we set up the secondary flight plan. And the secondary flight plan we used for either a possible change in the runway for departure, a departure or takeoff alternate, a complicated engine out SID, a, an immediate return back to our departure, or just a copy of the active. We went through a setup where we looked at how to set up the secondary flight plan for an immediate return, including performance for that return. Then we went on to the RADNAV page where we manually inserted 
information for the navbase to be used at departure. From the RadMap page, we then had to set up the performance part of the MCU setup. The performance took us back to the init page, but this time the init B page, where we set in the zero fuel CD and the zero fuel weight. Together with the fuel planning prompt or the block fuel manually inserted, we'll calculate all the fuel, the takeoff weight, the landing weight, and also complete all the performance for the actual flight plan. From the init B, we then looked at information for the performance. We inserted the V-speeds, we inserted the flap setting for takeoff, the THS trim setting, and we looked at the values, if required, that needed to be changed for flexible deviated takeoff, thrust reduction, altitude, acceleration altitude, transition altitude, as well as a takeoff shift, if applicable. The very last page was the progress page, and the progress page was used for situational awareness. We set in the departure threshold. In my case here, it was Lima, Foxtrot, Bravo, Oscar, 1, 4, right? To give us an exact bearing and distance back to that threshold in case of an emergency right after takeoff. We also check the accuracy of the IRS, which should be high if we have GPS primary. And that is the full setup of the aircraft for takeoff. Now, as part of the preparation, we will have for takeoff on the pilot flying side. In this case, I'm pilot flying on the left side here. I will have the performance page showing on my MCDU. And my co-pilot will have on his or her side the flight plan page shown. Mandatory setup for takeoff. In the Airbus aircraft, this is how we set up our MCDU for departure. Now, whether or not you are flying the Airbus A320 family, 330 or 340, if you're looking at the generation of aircraft that is similar to the 320, it will be the same setup. For the newer generation aircraft, such as the A350 or the A380, you are looking at a different setup because much more integration has been done through the MCDU and the flight management and guidance system. But this is the foundation for how to operate the MCDU. Also, having looked at all the pages and how to insert information, this is fundamental to how any of the MCDUs will work on the aircraft. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.